Hello, my name is Ruben Mesa, and I'm one of the hematologists at the Mayo Clinic in Arizona. And I'm joined by my colleague, Dr. Christina Gowan, who also focuses on myeloproliferative neoplasms. Christina, welcome. Thank you. So this video will serve as our video abstract for our manuscript regarding the use of palmolidomide and its potential implications for therapy in myelofibrosis. This for the Journal of Therapeutics and Clinical Risk Management. Now, in patients with myelofibrosis, anemia can be a major challenge, and hence the discussion on palmolidomide. Christina, how big is an issue is anemia for patients with myelofibrosis? Anemia can be a major issue for patients afflicted with myelofibrosis with effects such as shortness of breath, fatigue, um, really having a really important symptom impact on these patients. Ruxolitinib offers improvement in disease-related symptoms, splenomegaly, and even overall survival, but unfortunately, the therapeutic impact is limited in patients with myelofibrosis given the lack of impact in cytopenias. Now, popmolidomide is a medication that is an immunomodulatory drug uh, and is one of a family that included thalidomide and lenalidomide. In the manuscript, we review the trials of thalidomide alone and with prednisone, as well as lenalidomide that both demonstrated activity in improving anemia in patients with myelofibrosis. Limited ability to improve issues such as splenomegaly. Now, both of these agents had toxicity issues. Thalidomide can lead to neuropathy. Lenalidomide can lead to myelosuppression and GI toxicity. Palmolidomide began testing in myelofibrosis with hopefully a more favorable safety profile and more activity against TNF-alpha, which was felt to be a potentially important target in the anemia. In the manuscript, we reviewed the phase one and phase two studies that helped to demonstrate that palmolidomide was active in patients with myelofibrosis, it could improve anemia, and that even low doses of palmolidomide could be efficacious. We then go on to discuss the phase three study, the resumed study, in which there was activity seen with palmolidomide versus placebo. However, this did not reach statistical significance. Now, this is for a variety of different potential uh, reasons. Christina, thoughts on We'd seen this drug have activity in earlier studies, and in the larger study, uh, it did not quite reach statistical significance. Thoughts on why that might have been? Well, you know, looking at all of these different clinical studies, the endpoints were somewhat different, looking at different criteria. And so I th certainly think that played an impact in, in looking at the, uh, the different outcomes that are seen with, within these clinical trials. I think an important observation in that in the phase three study with palmolidomide, only kind of the worst of the worst patients were included in terms of the severity of the anemia, only patients with severe transfusion dependence. And this may well have had an impact in that the earlier studies that had response rates closer to 40% included individuals that were anemic but were not severely transfusion dependent. And this may represent a spectrum in terms of the severity of the anemia but also the ability of the activity as an immunomodulatory drug to overcome some of that challenge. So an important agent, an agent now approved in the therapy of multiple myeloma, uh, and is the subject of ongoing clinical trials in combination with JAK inhibitor therapy. So we may well have not have heard the last of palmolidomide uh, in myelofibrosis, and it represents continues to represent a very active class of agents, the immunomodulatory drugs in myelofibrosis. We hope you will find the manuscript interesting and uh, enlighten your practice. Christina, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Mensah.